Illinois will see a couple of big changes at the top of the state government when the next legislative year begins. J.B. Pritzker's decisive win in the governor's race signals the state will be moving in a different direction than under outgoing Governor Bruce Rauner. Pritzker's win wasn't a surprise given the polls showed him with a big lead for months. He won by a comfortable 54 percent margin to 39 percent. The race was called less than an hour after the polls closed. Pritzker will enjoy strong Democratic majorities in the House and Senate to pursue his policies. Another key win for Democrats came in the race for Attorney General. Lisa Madigan's decision not to seek another term made it a wide open race. Kwame Raoul kept it in the hands of Democrats, defeating Republican Erica Harold 54 to 43 percent. Democrats added to their stranglehold in the General Assembly. Democrats went into the election with a 67 to 51 majority in the House. Preliminary results pending potential runoff show it could end up at 73 to 45 in favor of the Democrats. That would be a two vote cushion for the 71 supermajority needed to override any veto. Democrats in the Illinois Senate went into the midterms with a 37 22 advantage, already a supermajority. That extended to a 39 20 stronghold. It was a great night for incumbents from the greater Quad Cities area. State Senator Neil Anderson won a second term in a very tight race against Democratic challenger Greg Johnson. Anderson with 51% of the vote. The margin of victory was a little more than 1,300 votes there. Republican Tony McCombie made it look easy by comparison, winning a second term in the Illinois State House with 59% of the vote to defeat Joel Padilla. Democrat Mike Halpin made it look even easier, coasting to a second term, representing Rock Island County in Springfield with 62% of the vote over Republican Glenn Evans. It all sets the stage for things to feel different in Springfield for the same people who will be representing the Quad Cities area. We are lucky to have two of them with us this morning, Representatives Mike Halpin and Tony McCombie. Thanks for being here and congratulations to you both again. Thank, Thank you. you. Great to have you always. Uh, all right, so the Democrats in Illinois got what they wanted, that is total control. So what do you expect to be the dynamic to be in Springfield, I guess, pending coming January? I'll start with you, Representative Halpin. Well, for me, we've seen when I took office, uh, the Illinois legislature at a low point. Uh, not a lot of communication, uh, had a budget impasse. And I think over the past two years, the rank and file, Democrats and Republicans in the House have uh, have warmed up, have started to work together, and I'm hopeful that with a new governor, we're going to continue that trend, continue to have on-time bipartisan budgets, and try to get the job done. What do you think, Representative McCombie? The dynamic changes a bit, certainly now. Um, how do you think that? How do you see that playing out? I guess. I, you know, I'm I'm really I'm unsure to be honest. I don't know how. I hope with representative help and that it is going to be more conversation more bipartisan i um, just on the way here was just speaking to one of mike's counterparts and hopeful you know i always trust until you can't trust so i hoping that he will listen um, like governor rauner um, he is a bazillionaire who has no political experience so i'm hoping that he does you know take his lieutenant governor juliana she's been there she was a freshman with us uh, takes her advice, puts good policy people in place and procedural people um, who can help, you know, bring us closer together. So you'd help, you're saying it basically helps to have someone at least in that, in the executive branch, knowing the playing field in the legislature. Yeah, I, I would think so. I think it certainly has helped uh, me and those others that have had some of that, you know, knowledge with them, for sure. You agree with that, Representative? I think so. I think everyone has been watching the legislature for, and the governor's office for the past one out four years and seeing the kind of deadlock and, and lack of communication. Nobody that I know wants to go back to that situation. Mm -hmm. now, now, we talked, you talked briefly about part bipartisanship. Will Republican voices be shut out of the process? Because I look at Iowa and the Republicans have complete control there and Democrats feel that they've been shut out. And Democrats could just do well do the same thing to Republicans. What do you think, Harry? How concerned are you about that? Oh, well, I hope that doesn't happen. Um, you know, I reached out to, because I know her, uh, Lieutenant uh, Governor-elect uh, Juliana, and just said, hey, please don't forget downstate. And that includes, you know, Mike. Mm -hmm. um, we are very different than Chicago. And when you have legislation passed by Chicago folks that uh, you know, exclude Chicago and Cook County, um, that bothers me. Um, let us do that legislation uh, and figure out what's best for our area. So I'm, it, it's, it's a little scary, but uh, I just, like I said, I have to trust until I can't trust. And I just really hope that we can have open, honest conversations. I would love to see Governor-elect uh, Pritzker come into our caucus and say, hey, this is who I am, this is what I want to do, and have conversations. I'm pretty sure that didn't happen uh, with Governor Rauner. Mm. Uh, and I don't know if it's ever happened, but I certainly think it would be uh, a good show of faith if, if that were to happen. You're confident about bipartisanship, it sounds like? Yeah, I, I'm certainly willing to do it, especially because when we talk about downstate and issues. And you both have to. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. And 
Uh, but what we've seen, it seems like uh, the Chicago area becomes more Democratic and downstate areas tend to be, you know, more Republican and that was only reinforced with this election. Mm -hmm. And so we need to be voices for downstate Illinois regardless of our party. Now how much does this change what the two of you do to influence the policies important to your respective districts? And as you just mentioned, that you both do have a lot of common interests here. Well, I was able to, to at least have some sort of uh, a beginning relationship with uh, JB as he traveled the state during the campaign. Um, I've gotten to know some of the people that he's been uh, working with him uh, during the campaign and that are hopefully being um, uh, in positions to help with the transition. And so I think uh, our voice here in Western Illinois will be heard in the governor's office and I'm going to do everything I can to, to make sure that happens. Does it change what you, how you approach things? No, I think both of us have um, been um, not quiet freshmen uh, and I think that people are considering what we are saying uh, in leadership. Uh, we've had some good bills together and um, bills that we had to work with, you know, more urban legislators. So yeah, I, I don't think so. I think we're just going to continue to uh, fight what's best for our district regardless of party lines and I think that's the, the most important thing that we can do to properly uh, represent. You see, and you touched on a relationship that you have with uh, Juliana Stratton. Is it, is it a significant one or is it really more cursory? Uh, no, we actually, our first year, lived right next door to each other. Uh, and she's always been one to watch. She's extremely intelligent, um, very giving, uh, has a big heart. And uh, I just hope that that goes throughout the whole state. We'll be watching for sure. We saw the stalemate with Governor Bruce Rauner, the Democrats. Uh, former Governor Pat Quinn didn't always see eye to eye with his fellow Democrats in the legislature. That was before both of your tenure. We know that. Uh, but Democrats are out of excuses. So how do you expect things to work with the Governor Pritzker and the legislature that we know is dominated by Michael Madigan, Representative Halpin? Well, I think the, the legislative process is going to be what it always is. I mean, it's going to be trying to balance interest and trying to get um, a consensus as to what, what needs to be done. And I think there are a lot of bills that were held up by the governor that passed with, with fairly comfortable margins that we're going to have to repass, and I think we'll have a governor that, that will sign them. Um, so that's going, to be, that, that's going to be different. But I think our priorities, at least in, in the Democratic House Caucus, are going to be very similar to what they've been for the past several years. Why do you think that works under a Pritzker administration? I know you're on the outside looking in largely here, but uh, we have seen tension even with a Democratic governor. Oh, sure. Uh, well, and there again, our state is extremely diverse. Um, so to, to, you know, the things that I'm very interested to see is what kind of gun legislation is going to happen again. Um, and different things that they think is working in Chicago and not, are they going to put it onto the entire state? Uh, I think you're going to see less political bills because they're not going to put their governor uh, in that place, uh, which, which could be a good thing. Um, so maybe there is some things that we can get done um, that are going to be more fair, in my opinion, um, rather than putting us each other on the spot just for the next election. But there is a lot to get done in Illinois. We have more ground to cover with Illinois State Representatives Tony McCombie and Mike Halpin. How the changes in Springfield make it easier or harder to solve some big problems facing Illinois. For the record.